All right, guys, so in this video, I just wanted to have some fun, take a look at some of the most Earth-like exoplanets here in 2024, as well as some other crazy planets, the Diamond Planet, the Titan Moon, and things like that, and just kind of go over some cool facts in terms of this website here on NASA. You can see the amount of exoplanets they've discovered. I thought this was kind of funny. 5,599 right now. They also do have a bunch of candidates to potentially be exoplanets. There's four main different uh, categories they put these planets in. A lot of planets fall under a similar category as Neptune, believe it or not. So Neptune has its own category. There's the super Earth-like planets, which doesn't necessarily mean the planet is actually a super Earth, but it has similar rocky surface characteristics to Earth. You do have your gas giants and then just other random ones as well. But I am going to be taking a look at some of the potential exoplanets that could be habitable, including the Kepler planets, which I'm sure many people know about. This is Kepler 22b. I always like looking at the renderings, you know, just because it's like, oh, what if it actually looks like this? This is just like computer generated, you know? We've never actually had a photo of this planet because of how far away it is. It looks like a water planet to me with some nice cloud coverage, but this was originally discovered back in 2011, according to NASA. It's labeled a super earth, that could be covered in a super ocean, but the jury is still out on its true nature. It is 2.4 times larger than Earth's radius, so it's kind of similar to Earth, you know, in terms of size, based off of some of these planets being 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times bigger than Earth, only being two and a half times bigger. We can kind of at least compare it slightly. Now, this is very interesting. Researchers found that an exoplanet in Earth's size range at a comparable distance from its sun and covered in water could have an average surface temperature of about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of its radical tilt, which they're saying could be caused by the super ocean that's inside this Earth-like planet, its north and south poles would be bathed in sunlight and darkness for half a year each as the planet circled it. I mean, that's kind of like Earth, honestly, because you have the North Pole and the South Pole. They both go through periods where, you know, it's either really light 100% of the time or really dark. But I think what they're insinuating that because it's tilted even further and more radically to its side, that obviously we do not have places on Earth that for six straight months are going to be covered in darkness or light, but, but Kepler 22b is very interesting. I think in general, many of these planets, once we get more technology, we're gonna see significant flaws with all of them. I'm not saying there aren't planets that even could be more habitable for humans than Earth is, because I think there are, when you look at Earth and the nature of its saltwater ocean and the fact that there are plenty of areas, you know, including Antarctica that are completely uninhabitable due to how cold they are. What if we could find a planet that had freshwater oceans and virtually the entire planet was calm and around 65, 70 degrees throughout much of it? Obviously, the entire planet is not going to be the same in terms of temperature just because some areas are going to be closer to the sun, further from its sun. But I do think we can find a place that's even more livable than Earth. And that's nothing against Earth. It's just the reality of how big the universe is. This planet, we'll see. It's got a super ocean. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, the potential photos that we have of it, based on how far away it is, it, they're not an accurate representation of what the planet actually looks like. You know, if there were people that were billions and billions of miles away from Earth, looking into Earth it's not going to be a completely accurate representation. Remember, the Earth experienced periods where it was totally frozen. It looked like a hellish landscape compared to where it is now. There were times where I'm sure people thought maybe Mars, you know, if they existed, maybe Mars or Venus could be more habitable than Earth. So these planets change over time. It just takes a really long time for them to change. And this planet is, if we're able to travel at the speed of light, which is 671 million miles per hour, it would take a little over 600 years to reach. Obviously, we do not have the technology for that at this point, but it is interesting. This is another planet, Kepler 186f. It is a potentially rocky world larger than Earth. It's almost got like a tannish color, kind of in between Earth's color and Mars color. And it's like this weird light tan, at least that's what they show in that image. And then this image, it kind of looks exactly like Earth. This was discovered back in 2014. 
It is a super Earth exoplanet that orbits an M type star and its mass is 1.71 Earths, so very similar in size. You could say it's almost double, but still, when we're comparing planets, it is similar. And this one is slightly closer than the other Kepler super ocean planet, but it would still take 580 years if we traveled at the speed of light. But getting to some other crazy exoplanets that have been discovered, this discovered in 2011, this is literal hell on Earth. This planet is hotter than the sun, and it's basically going to eat itself away because of how hot it is. Kepler 70b, the average temperature is 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, the average temperature 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the hottest planets that's ever been discovered. And the planet, because of how hot it is, it's evaporating itself. It's very small, about half the size of Earth. And it is extremely far away from us. Although, <laughs> me saying it's extremely far, it's all relative. I mean, all these planets are ridiculously far away from us. But 4,000 years is what it would take to travel to this planet if we could travel at the speed of light. This is the Dark Planet. That's the nickname. The TRES 2B Planet. A planet of darkness. And it is a gas giant, so there is no real surface. Its mass is 1.49 Jupiters, so it, it's bigger than Jupiter, almost a Jupiter and a half in terms of size, a massive, massive gas giant that apparently is blinding darkness. That's all it is. It also has an eerie, deep red glow that emanates from its burning atmosphere. What a crazy planet that is. And then I'm sure many people have heard of the Diamond Planet, now, I don't know when it was, maybe a few years ago, someone was saying the diamond planet is actually false or it's, it's made up, but I do want to talk about the idea of the diamond planet and how much money it would actually cost. The diamond planet was discovered back in 2004 and is about 40 light years away, and the initial estimate on the cost of the diamond planet is $26.9 Nuntillion. I believe Nuntillion involves 22 zeros, I want to say. So obviously the price is ridiculous, but when you actually think about it, the planet, the size of it, the amount of diamonds that it has beneath its surface, diamonds, because of how plentiful they are on this planet, let's just say hypothetically there's an Earth civil civilization on this planet, diamonds on this planet would be worth less than dirt is on Earth. Because there's more diamonds, they're so plentiful because of supply and demand, they're worthless. So the planet being worth $26.9 Nantillion, it doesn't, it's useless because if you have that many diamonds, the diamonds themselves effectively become worthless. If you've got so much of one thing, it's just like Titan, the Saturn moon. So you can see it says Titan has hundreds of times more liquid carbohydrates than all of the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth. So if there was a civilization on Titan, filling up your tank would be the equivalent of putting air in your tires. You know when you fill up air and it doesn't cost any money? Actually, some of them do charge money because it's compressed air, but in general, you know, you go to Gecko or whatever, you fill up air, it doesn't cost anything. The exact same thing would happen if you were on Titan and you could live on there. It would just be annoying to fill up your tank. It wouldn't cost any money because of the amount of natural gas that would be on the planet. It would be so plentiful. And I think inevitably, when it comes to like paying for gas and things like that, paying for electricity, it's all going to be with evolution. It's all going to be meaningless. The amount of energy we're going to be able to harness from the sun once we evolve to the point where our technology is good enough to have solar panels in space, the sun produces 1,000 times more energy than we'll ever need. And once we're able to farm all of that energy, see the number one problem with solar panels is they don't work 100% of the time because the sun goes down. You put, up, you put them up in space and you orbit them around the sun or put them closer to the sun, you're going to be exponentially gaining more energy from the sun. So the energy is there. We just have to catch it. And once we advance our technology f far enough, there's going to be no charges because we're going to have so much plentiful energy coming from the sun via the technology that we create. And we're going to be able to basically harvest the energy from the sun 
and it's going to be so plentiful and that's kind of the idea of titan with these well i guess it's not the idea but I, I just find it interesting how other planets have things that we find so rare like oh gas prices they're so bad well titan i mean you could literally go into a lake and just just get a bunch of gas i mean obviously you can't because it's not livable but it's just kind of a funny hypothetical but either way those are just some of the coolest exoplanets we have and i would say when you look at these exoplanets i do think once we get better technology there are going to be significant flaws that get revealed in them uh, maybe i'll do another video talking about more exoplanets because i know there's other exoplanets that are farther away that might even be more livable but unfortunately when it comes to the photos it's all just artist you know representation of what they think it possibly could look like we're never going to actually have a real photo because there's no way we could send something out that far and get a photo back within a certain time frame it's just not possible based on our current technology but either way guys that's going to do it for this video make sure you follow me on x link to that's always in the description